The following is a Journey into Comics Network production. Good luck. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast, the show where we talk about the modern and retro video games that we play and collect. I'm your host, Brando, and today we're going to take it easy, and we're going to take a look back at some more pickup videos like we did a few months ago. Basically, guys, what this is is, well, a few years ago, I'd say probably around 2014 or around about uh, maybe 2015, I started like cataloging my pickups for the Journey into Comics YouTube channel. Of course, this podcast spawned from that, essentially. It was just me making some extra video content that I talked about sometimes during the podcast. And the Game Addicts podcast spawned from those videos and some of my solo casts I was doing on the Journey into Comics channel at the time. And what I thought would be pretty cool is when we're on the down low, when there's not a lot to talk about, when we have some holidays or whatever, take a set, you know, take a, you know, seat back and not think about too much about what kind of show we're going to do and let's look at some of these old pickup videos that never made it over here to this channel and were the genesis of what this podcast became because of course we started doing pickups within the podcast that's like the first thing we try to do each and every podcast do we have any pickups well let's talk about them man let's see what we got and so what we're going to do is that we're going to go back and then in like into the time machine here and we're going to go and we're going to look at, I believe it's the very end of the year of 2014. Or yeah, 2014. We have November. Um, all my pickups for November of 2014. And then my pickups for December of 2014. And we're going to take a look at both of those videos. First up for November, we have coming off of my one of my biggest months in game collecting. It was in October of 2014. I got a really big NES deal. I went up north up towards Nate, the uh, you know co-founder of the Journey Comics Network and podcasts and all that kind of stuff. You could check that out on journeytocomics.com. But I went up and saw him, spent a bunch of money up there, came home with a bunch of stuff. Well, now, uh, just a few weeks after uh, that, I made another big NES haul, and I'm talking really big. It's one of my biggest catches for the amount of money that I spent, you know, at all. So uh, let's shoot it over to myself. Back in November of 2014, talking about these pickups. Hey guys, Brando here again with my November pickups. And I'm running a little behind with this one. Work's been crazy. Uh, you know, I'm the holiday season and everything, and I'm starting to feel a little under the weather, so please bear with me in this video. But I've, I've got quite a bit to go through. I, I had another really big NES haul for November and some Black Friday stuff. So let's, let's just get right down to it. So first, uh, I actually, I've had this for a little while, but I hadn't got it working. And I just got it working, got it cleaned. It is the uh, Adventure of Link, Zelda 2 for the NES Gold Cartridge. And it's a, it's a little beat up. I don't know if you can tell on camera. And you know, it's got some good scuffs on it. And uh, it's actually a donation earlier in the year from a coworker of mine. So thanks, Aaron, for this. And um, so I believe it was kept in like a garage, you know, just kind of like haphazardly, you know, stored and everything. So the fact that it, it you know, that it, that I got it to work is, I'm kind of including it in this because I've had it for a while, never had an NES to test it out or do anything with it. But so, but as of like November, I've been able to get it to work and have some fun with it. So Zelda two, and the other one that he actually donated, but I actually got in the hall as a like a duplicate, and that was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. And you're you're gonna see in my NES videos, I have the uh, black sleeves on some of them. And the ones that I have in the video that have the black sleeves actually have the uh, manual with them. I actually ended up having this manual stored away because that same coworker uh, donated a bunch of manuals just randomly. And I got some manuals with the haul as well. So I ended up getting uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I also ended up getting Arkanoid. If you guys are familiar with the little ball breaker game with the little, um, little, the little platform and you hit the ball up around, Arkanoid is basically that with power ups and everything. Um, I don't know if this was the first one that had the power-ups, but you know, I heard a lot about Arkanoid. When I saw it, I actually, you know, from the little label, 
I pretty much knew exactly what it was. So, Arkanoid. Um, okay, I lied on this one. This one has a sleeve, and no manual. But this one is uh, Arcus's Ring. I knew absolutely nothing about this until I I found it in the uh, in the hall. But it's a game released by Sammy, and I recognize the name. Uh, be honest with you, I'm not too familiar on games that they produce or you know what other games they put out. I'm gonna have to look into it. But Arcus's Ring. And, uh, baseball. Baseball. <laughs> uh, this is actually one of three baseball games that I got. This one was in the hall, though, and I've actually got some other games that I uh, traded because I, I got a Legend of Zelda gold cartridge in the hall as well. And uh, a buddy of mine really wanted one, and I traded it away for about, you know, five games or whatever. I think it was six, but one of them was a duplicate. And two of the games that he gave me were Bases Loaded 1 and 2. So that kind of, you know, fits my baseball kick there. Uh, this one I had never heard of prior to this haul either. Um, wood and Water Rage. Pretty much kind of like a, a an extreme sport surf skateboard thing. I never saw any surfing because I never got past the skateboarding. But, you know, it is what it is. This one I was really excited because I had... Anytime you see a, you know, a, a cartridge that is not gray, that means it is an unofficial, unlicensed Nintendo game. And of course, this is by Tengen, and they are an offshoot of the Atari company. So they released a game called Super Sprint, and eventually, I think they ended up having some sort of like, lawsuit or settlement for releasing these titles. I think there were about nine of them or ten of them in these black style cartridges. So, I mean, it was really cool to see because, you know, uh, having never owned an NES or only having knowledge of this from other YouTubers and whatnot. It was really cool to get something that was kind of, you know, like off kilter from everything else. And one of my really big surprises for the haul, I mean, there were quite a few games in here that I was, that I've been very well aware of, but one of the very first NES games I ever played, and it has a slip cover with no manual, so I am a complete liar. RC Pro-Am, 32 tracks of racing thrills. I remember being at my cousin's house and I was uh, spending the night there for the very first time and I was very uncomfortable and having a hard time adjusting and one of the things they did to calm me down was I played a little bit of RC Pro-Am and I sucked at it just as, as much as I suck at it now. <laughs> so, but I, but I absolutely love it. It brings back so many memories. Um, got Skate or Die. Another skateboarding game that, I, that came in this and this one I actually heard of but I never played. So I really have no opinion on it too much. But, Kung Fu. I I really like these, you know, some of these original NES games like the baseball, where it's just like it's very self-explanatory. <laughs> you see a guy, you know, you know, throwing a roundhouse kick or whatever, and it, and pretty much that shows you what move you need to do throughout the entire game. Because punching is pretty much useless. You need to kick everything, kick everything to death, just like Chuck Norris. Um, the classic Mario Brothers. I don't know why I hesitated. The classic Mario Brothers. But yeah, you know, I, I was, uh, this was another one that I was really happy to see. And there's another one that is a arcade classic that was in this that I was really happy to see as well. But uh, I remember playing this. Was it the, I think it was on what, Mario 3? That had a version of the original Mario Brothers that you can play. Um, one of a couple of LJN games, I think, or in there, at least I know this one. Uh, they did a lot of like license games that were really bad, and Jaws. Um, I didn't play too much of it, but Jaws. It's very repetitive, but that's pretty much it. Uh, another game that I got in my little trade with my buddy Rob uh, was Jordan vs. Bird, one-on-one, -on -one. and we actually played this, and he totally stomped me at it. I had no idea what, he was, what I was doing, and I don't think he'd ever played it before, but I guess that goes to show you just how good I am at sports games. Now, when I got this, I, it, it reminded me instantly of the Angry Video Game Nerd. You know, he's done so many videos on other games, but for, the, for some reason this one sticks out in my mind, but Fester's Quest. I actually never heard of this before I saw his video, and I thought it was kind of weird that they had just an offshoot game from Fester from the Adams Family, running down people with like a big, like, was it a big like gun or whatever, collecting light bulbs. But yeah, Fester's Quest. Another puzzle game here, it is uh, Orb 3D. 
I tried playing this and I really didn't get the knack of it. I wasn't very good at it. So Orb 3D is pretty much all I had to say about that one. Uh, again, okay, I was right. LJN in it's Friday the 13th and A, I happened to have the manual with it. That's kind of cool. So uh, I remember also this from the Angry Video Game Nerd. I never played it before I got it, but it, it's pretty horrible where you're throwing rocks and that dang alarm going off where you got to go try and rescue the kids across the dang map. Not a too enjoyable experience. Never heard of this again before Paul. And that is Top Secret Episode Golgo 13 by Vic Tokai. I had never heard of it, so Golgo 13. Another really self explanatory game Golf. Now, this guy sort of resembles um, Mario, but I don't think it, it was there a Mario Golf with the NES? Was there a, something about, like, with, I remember there being something like, like, a head Mario, or Mario Golf. I don't know if that was on the, uh, maybe there's one on the game, I don't know. But I just seem to remember, like, a friend of mine's dad playing Mario Golf for some reason. Another puzzle game, Tetris. Now, I don't know um, if I have included this before in a video, but I want to say I got it in, it, I got it in this hall, and maybe, um... No, 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 okay, it was in another video. I got it in this hall, and then it was along with the trade that I made with my buddy. He went ahead and just threw it in because he had a double of it as well. Um, another, uh, you know, NES straight shooting series, pinball, where you play pinball. Now, they have this little guy down here running around, and I didn't play too much of it to see if this little Mario clone is actually in pinball, but I didn't see anybody in there like that. Now, this one, I was really excited, and it was pretty much the last one that I saw in the hall and had no idea that it was in there. River City Ransom. I absolutely loved this game growing up. It was so much fun and I loved playing uh, and beating up all those guys and having their, having their like little sayings when you beat them like Blarg and you know Mama and all that stuff. That was really fun. Puzzle games. More and more puzzle games. Dr. Mario. Now I've always sucked completely at Dr. Mario. So I mean it was it's cool to have it and it's a must have but I hope I get better and I think I need practice. Excite Bike. I was really happy to see that this was in here. I got a lot of big titles out of the way just in this one haul. And I got actually all these games plus a, you know, the original system, which I'm not going to include in the video because you guys have obviously seen one before. And plus I have it apart working on it. So, you know, terrible planning on my part. But I got everything for like 60 bucks. And I, the guy that I bought this stuff off of on Craigslist, he asked me, you know, are you, did you read you know, all the uh, descriptions. Are you sh are you sure you want this? The system's kind of in poor shape. And I'm like, dude, yeah, sure, I want the games. You know, I already have a system. Now this one was really random because I had never heard of the damn game and I just happened to have the uh, the manual for it that my coworker donated the games and a bunch of manuals, you know, back in earlier the year and that is a game called Dragon Spirit. And I just happened to get it in the hall and I already had the manual without knowing anything about it. So that's quite a coincidence there. Um, if I remember this one, is this the one that's like the rail shooter? It's been a while since I tested all this stuff out, so please excuse me if I'm completely wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And this one is Destination Earth Star. Now, this one was a really neat little like space shooter where you, you have like this little grid, I believe, and you have to like find your way around it and find the enemies and shoot them, and it, it just seemed like it took absolutely forever. And I don't know if there's a quicker way to play the game, but it just, it wasn't my cup of tea at all. I said there was another uh, arcade classic, and that is the original Donkey Kong. Now, I have the uh, Donkey Kong Classics, which has the original and then Donkey Kong Jr., but I guess this one was released first. Uh, I would assume so anyway. But this one, along with some of the other games in here, more than equaled out to like the worth of the a lot that I got out of everything. So I thought that was just so cool to have the actual original along with the, uh, the other bundle thing that I have. So this one that I got, it was the last one in the trade that I did with my buddy Rob for that Legend of Zelda, that was Double Dragon. I got Double Dragon 2 in the last haul in October. So um, he, he asked me kind of what I wanted and he mentioned Double Dragon and, th and threw in a bunch of other games to kind of equal out kind of the worth and everything. So, yeah, Double Dragon, I'm really happy to have this, so I have one or two now. Now, uh, was there a third one? I think there was. But anyway, moving on. Another one that I happened to have the manual for beforehand, 
that was in this. A little bit more common though, than or known, I guess, than Dragon Spirit, unless I'm just totally out of touch, is so Simon's Quest, Castlevania 2. Now, this game does get a lot of flack for being completely different. It's sort of a different entry for the series. I love the Castlevania series, but I, this is the only one I own so far. So I guess I'm just gonna have to play it and love it. Actually, I own some for the PSP, don't I? Yes, I do. Totally forgot about that. Good memory. <laughs> but I guess I'll just, um, that's the NES haul. So I'm gonna move on. The same day, I made a, made a deal for, for some Xbox games. So the first one is a uh, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks which I never played back in the day. I remember seeing the trailers for it and uh, you know wanted to check it out and I saw that that was in there. I'm like, you know what? I've never played it. I'd like to own it. And it, it, it's not bad. Kind of a good kind of beat-em-up kind of game. Of course, this next game is a must-own and I already own it for the PS2. But it was in the, like in the hall and it is GTA San Andreas. The case is really beat up and, you know, it, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Um, not the best copy. Um, and also the disc is kind of kind of scratched. It might be like ear like irreparable because I pick a big mark in there. It's a, it doesn't even really load up. So, San Andreas, um, my very first Call of Duty game that I ever owned, Call of Duty Two. I'm not a big first person shooter at a fan at all. So Call of Duty Two, it is what it is. I remember playing this when the 360 first came out on like the demo or whatever. I played that. One of my favorite uh, Tony Hawk games, Tony Hawk Underground. I remember playing the heck out of this when this came out, and I I, I really liked how it, it, the story mode actually revolved around a character that, that you know that you created and you kind of worked his way up. So liked Underground. Now this one is blank. It has no label. I could get one printed up. It's 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 it, it, you know, it's Underground too basically. <laughs> so this one I actually didn't like nearly as much, uh, simply for the fact that they threw in like Viva little band characters and. Made it all jackassy. It wasn't nearly as interesting. Now, this last one was a complete and utter buzzkill. Now, I got a good deal on these games, even though I had, you had one that doesn't work, one that has no label. Um, I got a great deal on great prices, and this one was supposed to be the champion of the bunch. And that is for the Xbox, Star Wars Battlefront 2. But much to my dismay, when I was making the deal, I was opening stuff up and checking it out. And it's empty. I was so disheartened. I had such a great deal with the NES stuff and was such a good mood and this really deflated everything. Um, I mean that's the game that's the reason why I made the deal in the first place. It was if anybody knows anything about how much that game on the Xbox is going for it's it's about a $40 game and let's just say I was about ready to pay like three bucks for it. So soul crushing man soul crushing but you know you win some, you lose some. So now we're gonna go to uh, uh, for the PS3. I got a donation from a, another coworker. He absolutely loves the Gran Turismo series, and he's done with this uh, Gran Turismo Five. And he says, "Here, here you go, for your collection." Now the case is like not in the best shape, but you know what? I'll take what I can get. Cases can be replaced. So thanks, Mike, for that one. Uh, I bought this one. Um, in anticipation for the third one. I actually only played the demo and I was hoping to get to play it and get through it before the next one and that didn't happen. It was Dragon Age 2. Um, I'm playing the other one. Uh, of course, that's a pretty much a spoiler. I got Inquisition, I'll show that in a second. But um, I got this, didn't get a chance to finish it. I, I started it and pretty much there, there was no way I was gonna finish it. Before I do my next playthrough though on, on Inquisition, I will play through this one and get it done. So. With that being said, let's just go straight to Dragon Age Inquisition. So this is probably the best game that I've played all year. I absolutely love this game. It has a really good multiplayer as well. The, it has a really strong uh, you know, single player. Some people say that the story is a little weak. Eh, maybe, yeah, okay, a little weak, but really high in uh, characterization. A lot of character development, really well done. Uh, and it won Game of the Year at the Game Awards. And I think it's very well deserving of that. It's one of the best ones i played all year. And on the same day, I picked up the remaster for GTA V. I didn't need it, but I got it anyway. And it looks amazing. And if I ever want to play GTA again, I got it on the PS4. So, it's done. <laughs> the, now these two games I got at the very beginning of the month. They were my, basically on what, November 1st. 
So I was going to put him in the last video because that's when I shot the last video, but I decided to hold him off, and that's The Walking Dead Season 1 and 2. I actually bought uh, Season 1 of The Walking Dead digitally for the PS3, and I was going to, I had several chances to buy the actual physical copy of Season 1, and I saw that they were coming to PS4, and I figured, you know, they're not going to be any better on the PS4, but I could just use them as saying I got some more PS4 games. So yeah, Walking Dead. Uh, I played through the first one all the way, plus the DLC. Awesome game, great game. Need to get to this one, and I heard it's good, so definitely need to get to that. Now we're on to my Black Friday deals. First of all, I want to say that I bought an Xbox One this month. To anybody who may have missed that, I have an unboxing video. Uh, I'll link that down below. But I went ahead and got some games on Black Friday. I got some good deals on these. I got uh, uh, Watch Dogs, the Walmart edition with bonus whatever. Um, which, it, convenient, <laughs> funny story. I actually pre-ordered this with, with my PS4 last year. And when they pushed it back, I canceled the pre-order and got uh, AC Black Flag instead. And never picked this up when it came out because I was just disappointed by how it was turning out. And kind of the... Just mediocrity it was kind of getting from both critics and some of my friends that had played it So now I can actually play it for myself, and I thought why not just get it for the Xbox one if it, you know it is what it is um, You know some people say it plays better on the PS4, but uh, honestly I Think for a lot of this generation unless you put these things side by side you're really not going to notice um, Rise Son of Rome I you know when this game came out I kind of wanted to check it out. It kind of looked like a more of a uh, Less puzzly God of War type, you know, beat them up. But I, you know, this kind of changes up the gameplay element of that. It has a really good combat system, but it is pretty short. I only spent like two hours with it. I'm already kind of like a quarter of the way done with it. And then I haven't even touched this one yet. And this one was also nominated for Game of the Year. And that's Shadow of Mordor. I really need to get into this. As soon as I'm done with Dragon Age, I'm diving right into Shadow of Mordor. So I now have three physical Xbox One games. I've got the I got the Call of Duty edition of the Xbox One for anybody that's wondering, but that video will be unboxing thing will be down below. So they were having a buy one get one free at Meyer, I believe, and I went ahead and got Ducktales Remastered for the Wii U, and of course I I actually just got the NES Ducktales in October in that haul, but I've been wanting to get this for quite a while because I you know I love the NES game for this, but but the fact that they got like the voice cast to come back. And we do this, including the guy that is Scrooge, who's like 90-something. You know, I heard nothing but good things about this, and I finally had a chance to pick it up. So I got that. And then for my free game, they didn't have a whole lot of selection. But I went ahead and got uh, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. And uh, one of the reasons why I got this is because my collecting is going to slow down a lot after the new year. Um... Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of like monthly videos with big hauls like this anymore because I got a really big uh, responsibility coming next year. Anybody who doesn't listen to the podcast, we've got a baby on the way. So my collecting habits kind of got to cut down a little bit. You know, I went pretty hog wild in November with a lot of brand new games and, you know, with Black Friday and then the NES haul. So I have quite a bit to show, but one reason why I got this and decided to get it is because it has a, a lot of Genesis games that are must-haves, like your Fantasy Stars, you know, your all your Sonics, your Streets of Rage games. So, I want, I really wanted to just have this because some of that stuff I may, I may not be able to get for a while, but I have them on here and can play them at my leisure. So, yeah, the last thing that I want to show is I got it online from StoneAgeGamer.com. I'm not endorsed by them, but they're having a uh, like a Cyber Monday sale. So technically, this is actually like what December first. Or whatever, but I wanted to go ahead and just throw it in this video anyway because I like it that much. It is the Super Retro Advance adapter for your Super Nintendo. Basically, you can play your your Game Boy Advance games on your TV through your uh, through the power of your Super Nintendo. Now, what it does, it just sits in there like normal, no other power necessary. It actually works off of that power source, but it has its own AV out system here that you plug into your TV and. Pretty much, it uh, emulates Game Boy Advance, and it plays it right from your TV, kind of like the Game Boy Advance player from like the uh, the GameCube. But I've actually heard this has a little bit of a better color than on the GameCube player because, ironically, I, I've been looking for that GameCube player for months. 
I wanted to have it get one to kind of you know finish off my GameCube down there and I finally found one about a few weeks after I got this and I have I found one complete and at a good price but you know what it is what it is I love this this is really neat I, I want to be able to play my games on the TV and, you know because the Game Boy Advance is kind of like a portable uh, you know Super Nintendo anyway so yeah the uh, you know Super Retro Advance player they also have ones for like the NES and the Sega Genesis that you can play through your Super Nintendo if you don't have the systems. So, no, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen those or see how they look or anything like that or any videos on those, but, you know, I can attest to this. This works great, the colors look good. You use the uh, Super Nintendo controller, so it works fine, it feels fine. So if you're interested in that, definitely give this a shot. So guys, that was my November uh, gaming pickups. Went a little crazy with some stuff. Of course, the, uh, the NES haul uh, was the, probably the cheapest all around for the amount of games, the great games that I got in there. But everything else, you know, I got some you know good deals on Black Friday for stuff like that too. So um, I got some good stuff coming for December. I've already had a really big shopping haul. And I'm actually, I just made another deal with my good friend Veronica who hooked me up in October on those NES games. She's got some Genesis stuff that she's willing to sell me. So I'm gonna meet her at the end of the month and we'll see what we get out of that. So tell you what guys, See you then. Check us out on Journey into Comics on iTunes, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, check out more videos on this channel. Just whatever, guys. And I, I'll see you guys next month. All right. And we are back here in the present time. And uh, that, you know, it's really cool to go back and revisit, you know, myself essentially, but to revisit these pickups because a lot of these pickups, have, of course, were made, and a lot of my collection was a mask before the podcast even began. And I always said, right when I started collecting, I wanted to do a, a podcast kind of cataloging my, 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 you know, my collecting journey. And that didn't happen until a few more years later. So it's really cool now in the more current uh, time period where I'm still collecting, but to go back and look at the big NES deal, the flop that was the, you know, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 Xbox one, that was really Still a downer, man. That that one still gets to me, even though the, the overall price of the game has gone down considerably uh, since that time. Man, that was just still heartbreaking because I thought I made another killer deal. We we traveled like an hour one way, an hour and a half the other way. You know, we had family all the way over there. We were going to go see them anyway. Uh, you know, the hour and a half went away. So, like, we, we, we made uh, not a very special trip, but I made the deal to make the, you know, the transaction on that trip. And it just, it was just like, dang it, man. I just kind of, with as high as I was I got off of the uh, collector bug, getting, you know, for the early part of the day, coming home that day was like, it kind of ended bittersweet. But at the end of the day, you know, all all that, you know, all that is well ends well, I guess. And uh, right now, before we hit it over, over to myself for the other one, I have a couple of gaming pickups, um, gaming-oriented pickups. For Christmas this year, I got some more Mass Effect Pops. And I never really showed too much interest in collecting the Andromeda Pops. Uh, they're just, I think probably the only one that I would really go after would be Jaw. But I never really, f like, got into it as far as that, you know, like, let's go out and hunt them all down. And I, which I made a mistake of doing that with the original Mass Effect Pops because now Grunt is, like, way too much. And Miranda, she's a little too high. Tally, I actually have Tally, so thankfully one of the more expensive ones, I have that one. But uh, I did pick up uh, Sarah Ryder, who is like the sister writer, like the main character. Got Liam, and then I got PB. And so I got a couple here. Uh, they show the rest of them on, like, on the back. They have a, a Sarah Ryder mask. I saw that at GameStop. See, now I, now I got like some of these, and I'm going to want to track the rest of them down. They have a variant for, for Sarah, which has a mask on. I might pick that up. Sarah Ryder N7. Uh, then we have uh, Jaw. And then we have a different version of PB who has a gun. So, you know, if I never track the other ones down, I'm not going to, you know, lose any sleep over it. But it, it's still pretty cool to have them because as disappointing in a way as Andromeda was, I do think it earns more flack than what it deserves. And it, it, it's a game that I look forward to revisiting. Maybe not right away. I'm really, really high on the Switch right now. So it's going to be a while before I get back to playing another playthrough of Andromeda. But I would love to go back and replay it with some different choices. And uh, I'll play as Sarah this time. I played as, uh, I can't remember the name of the brother. Uh, but I played uh, first playthrough with him. So I'll play second playthrough as Sarah. So now we're going to go back to December. And my holiday pickups from 2014. 
And this was really exciting. I got a lot of cool stuff here. And uh, it was really cool to go back. Uh, not included in the video, I make a mention of it. I did pick up the Call of Duty Xbox One. Uh, that is the Advanced Warfare Edition. Um, that's still the only Xbox One that I own. I haven't upgraded or anything. But I don't include that in the video because I did an unboxing for it. And I'm not going to include it on the, on the podcast because I'm just unboxing it. Um, maybe I'll upload it uh, separately to the Game Addicts channel and I'll link it. But if you guys really want to see that. But uh, it, I just don't think that would be really cool podcasting uh, content. Like just listen to me open up this stuff and talk about it. But uh, So now, yeah, I'm going to shoot it back to my past self, Brando from 2014. Take it away. Hey guys, Brando back here again, and the holidays are finally past us, so I hope you had a good one. I sure did, and I got a lot of gaming goodness to show you from December and from all my holiday pickups, so let's just get right down to it and just see what all we got. So first thing I'm going to cover is actually the most recent thing that I got. Um, if anyone has been uh, uh, watching and keeping track, I mentioned that I may have had another deal set up with my friend Veronica that I met up for my NES haul back a few videos ago. And uh, pretty much, yeah, we did that and I got a bunch of Sega Genesis stuff. So I'm just going to kind of go over the games and everything. Uh, I got uh, Wanna Dead or Alive or Bonan uh, Bonanza Brothers, which I never heard of before. I actually saw it. Apparently you play as... Uh, one or two of these uh, guys trying to like uh, steal stuff. So looks like they got uh, like this big, uh, big open uh, like pistols that they used to hunt with, or like those big uh, like over exaggerated pistols. But uh, the names of brothers, uh, I got Mortal Kombat, the original Mortal Kombat, and I was really happy to get this on the Genesis because the Super Nintendo version took out all the blood, and uh, you can activate all the blood with like a code in this one. So I mean. I was really happy to get that, and of course, right along with it is uh, Mortal Kombat 2, which I've heard is actually still, uh, both of these games are kind of better in the Genesis. I'm not sure I put them side by side or anything. I actually did play these on the Super Nintendo, though, when I was a kid. So it was really neat to kind of see these uh, on the Genesis. And uh, I also got Pitfall, the Mind Adventure. I never did play this one when I was younger. Uh, I, of course, I have played Pitfall before. It's, you know, classic Activision title from, like, the Atari days and everything like that, so... Uh, looking forward to really diving into this one. I did test it out and it was harder than heck. Could, I really couldn't even get past the first level. So I guess I'll just have to practice. I got uh, a game called Super Hydlide. I think that's how you say it. Super Hydlide. Made by Seismic. And it, it is an RPG. It, 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 it was very surprising uh, that this kind of looked the way it did because I kind of felt like it was underpowered. I mean, I didn't make it very far and I was just testing it out. Seeing it, seeing it if it worked, trying to get a you know a kind of a handle on the uh, on like icon on the battle system and everything, but it was very hard and I had a hard time figuring it out. And the graphics looked a little underpowered, especially for what the Genesis was capable of. I got Shinobi Three: Return of the Ninja Master. Now I did actually play you know some old Shinobi games from the NES and everything, but I'd never played this one. And uh, I had a lot of fun when I was playing when I was playing this one. When I was testing it out and everything. And I had a hard time putting it down because, you know, I did get, you know, quite a few games with the bundle. But uh, this one was definitely one of my favorite ones in the bunch. Now, this one is a boxing game from Sega Sports, Greatest Heavyweights. I don't know if I played this one because I, I know there was at least one that my cousin had for the Genesis. And it reminded me of this one, but I'm not sure if this was it or not. But, you know, they got a bunch of, like, you know, boxing legends and everything that you can play as. And this one is uh, one of my favorites in the, in the group. Definitely one of the uh, cooler finds in it. And it's Target Earth, which is a uh, kind of like this anime style of like mech game where you, you kind of go through this, uh, like the level. It's like a side scroller and you're shooting and everything. It's really hard. Uh, it, kind of like along the same lines as Pitfall as far as like how frustrated that, that I was getting with it because it was just so freaking difficult. Games were a lot harder back in the day. Now, the next two that I'm going to show you, I actually got when I got the NES haul from Veronica, and she just had this stuff in there, and I, 
I didn't buy it all because we were going to some other shops and stuff that day. And uh, there was just a few in there that I wanted to grab. And uh, on the other video, I actually put a little like a uh, little thing up on the video that said that I lost some footage. And I did lose some footage, unfortunately. Uh, it showed that I, I, sh I think I said that I got Street Fighter and I got uh, X-Men. But I also got this good little gem and a Shadow Run. A neat little uh, kind of like RPG, uh, something like this, like, like dystopian future where everything's kind of like uh, run down. It kind of reminded me a lot of uh, like like the main gameplay where you walk around and you talk to people. That whole segment kind of reminded me a little bit of like Fallout, but it was more of a like kind of a top down, or roaming around and shooting kind of adventure game. But I, I I did remember seeing this. I believe it was on an episode of Game Sack. So. When I saw it, I definitely recognized the name. I didn't really know what it was or anything like that until I got home and I was looking it up. I'm like, and then I, of course, remembered exactly what it was. Uh, the other one that I got is a classic that I did play when I was a kid, Earthworm Jim. And I played it on the, on the Super Nintendo because while I did have a Genesis when I was a kid, the Super Nintendo was definitely my system of choice, both because uh, I kind of liked it better, but uh, also because of that little, like, uh, like game trading ring we had that I mentioned in a few videos ago where, you know, I had uh, a Super Nintendo, but so did like almost every single one of my friends and we all got different games. So we just kind of like traded games back and forth. And, that, and that's how I got to play this. But when I saw this, I mean, this thing is in near perfect condition. I mean, there's a little bit of fraying on like, like the label and up here, but you know, uh, it comes with the manual and everything. Well, the manual's got like a crease here. So I guess it's not perfect. The card's in perfect condition. But some of these games that I got here also came with, uh, uh, manuals as well. Now the last one that was in this, um, I already have it, but I noticed there was something different about it. And that's Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now I actually got mine with my system uh, many, many, many years ago. And I still have the cart. I don't have the box. But I noticed that this says Mega Drive on it. So of course if you don't know, the Sega Genesis was known as the Mega Drive in other areas of the world, in Europe and in Japan. But I, uh, if you look on the back of it, it has a lot of different other languages in it, so I'm like, okay, is, is this Canadian? I didn't know if, I didn't know if they called it Mega Drive up there or not. And apparently they don't, but I didn't know if this was going to work on my system, and it does. It works just fine, fires right up. So I'm beginning to wonder, are there some Mega Drive games that do work on US systems, and some that don't? Because, of course, I mean, in order to play import games, you're going to need, like, a little pass-through, a little, like, a like a cartridge, or, I don't know, like a Game Genie or something to be able to play these. Or you need to have a hack system, or you need, a, you know, a Mega Drive, like, in itself, and have that all set up. But, you know, this comes with the manual and everything. So, but, you know, when I put this in my app on my phone, I, and I scanned the barcode, it came up as European. So, I don't know. Because I was trying to find out exactly why this says Mega Drive and why it works on my system. So that was definitely, it's still kind of a riddle to me. If anybody knows, please comment down below and fill me in on that. Now, I did get a couple of just loose carts with that whole group, and I got another copy of Sonic 1, which is very convenient because the one I have no longer works. So now I have a working copy of Sonic 1, not for resale version, and then I got Streets of Rage 2, not for resale, again, uh, loose cart, no box or anything like that. But that was really cool that I got Streets of Rage. I, I definitely remember uh, borrowing this from my friend Chris, of course, who is also my fellow admin on Extra Life Games, and I'll link that page down below. But his name's Crim uh, Crimson on there. He let me borrow Streets of Rage back in the day, and uh, Altered Beast, which I did play back in the day as well. So it was really cool to kind of go back and, re and revisit this because I hadn't played it in many, many years. And of course, uh, I got the uh, Model One Genesis. I haven't cleaned it or anything yet. It's it's kind of dirty and everything. Uh, but unfortunately she couldn't find the power cable or the AV cable, so I don't have any of that yet. They're not too expensive to get a hold of. So she said if she found them, she, that she would send them my way, but you know, I can just pick up my own. It's not really that big a deal to get my own because they're not really that expensive. Um, now, I did buy some other loose Genesis stuff for this month, surprisingly, and the first one that I bought was Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. And uh, I actually did find this box for the Super Nintendo version uh, a couple months ago, and that's the one I actually played. But I saw a video uh, where they were showcasing the Genesis version of Zombies, and I really liked it. I liked how it gave like that little grid map and kind of let you know where stuff was. So that was really neat, and I was really happy to get a hold of this. Uh, this one's called Comic Zone. 
came out kind of late in the Genesis life. I never did play it back in the day. I, I remember seeing it in like a Game Pro magazine or, or whatever it was. But uh, it's like this side scroller beat em up where you make your way through like the different uh, cells of, of like the comic book page. And you, it's actually pretty challenging too. But really good graphics, a decent fighting system. And I, I, I really liked how it was different and innovative in how you moved around your level. So it was really neat to check out. Um, another Genesis uh, staple here, Kid Chameleon, a good old side-scroller. Um, I don't remember if I played that or not, but I do know that I played this next one, and that was Vector Man. Uh, I ended up getting you know uh, Kid Chameleon and Vector Man really cheap, so I was really happy to get a hold of that, and I'm just really happy to have like a lot more to show for my Genesis collection, because it's been very sparse, and when I started collecting, I, I got a few things for it, but for a lot, of the, a lot of the year, my Genesis was out of commission because I didn't have the right cables or anything like that. But now it's up and running. I've got a decent start to a collection. So, you know, there you go. There's my Genesis haul from both Veronica and stuff that I got from other parts of the month. Um, now, I did go on a really big gaming hunt uh, in about the middle of the month when we did all Christmas shopping. And I got to go out and buy a bunch of games just for me because, as I said before, we got a little bundle of joy on the way. So I'm gonna have to kind of scale it back a little bit. So this was sort of just kind of done as a, you know, kind of a, not quite a last hurrah. I'm still gonna be able to collect and do some stuff, but maybe nothing quite this big uh, going forward for a while. But I guess we'll start with the N64. Uh, good old Rare was on fire for the N64. And Jet Force Gemini, really great game with this one. I really enjoyed that when I was a kid. So I was really happy to find that. And of course, another one from Rare, Donkey Kong 64, which, I never really got into back in the day. I played a little bit of it, but I didn't own a 64. Uh, my buddies did. And when I did play it, I only played a little bit of this one. But it is good, and I really enjoyed it. Um, now, this next one I was so excited to find, and now I'm gonna have to find the, it, you know, it, it's matching brother. It's the Zelda Majora's Mask Gold Cart Collectors. Kind of like a holographic thing going on there. So. I'm gonna have to find the Operating of Time gold cart now because I'm a completionist like that. Um, for the Game Boy Advance, my lone Game Boy Advance uh, gaming pickup is Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. You probably can't even read the label. Just trust me, it's what it is. But I love Final Fantasy, I love Final Fantasy Tactics. I, what's funny about it is I actually still don't own the very original on PS1. But I've got it on PSP, I've got it on, on uh, Game Boy Advance, and. So there we are, and, and in fact, this one starts off a little different. I'm not even for sure if it's entirely the same game, because it starts off really different with like a snowball fight, and I don't remember that from the other two versions. I'm gonna have to dive into that and see if, see if it is the same. Um, I got really lucky on the uh, DS. I got both of these, and, and it came the same day and came across them, but Dragon Quest IV, Dragon Quest VI. Um, I've got Dragon Quest IX, and I really haven't got a chance to really dive into it. I've had a you know, just a lot of games that I've gotten this year, and this uh, unfortunately with RPGs, uh, I have a lot of them, and they're one of my favorite things to collect. And time is just a virtue I don't have, uh, especially this year with work. It was really busy, and uh, so going forward for the 3DS, I got Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Um, I love the Kingdom Hearts series. I love you know RPGs in general, but I uh, I've gotten to play almost all the other ones except for this one. So I finally have this to add to that collection. Um, I got some NES games, and one of the first ones was Snake's Revenge, the unofficial sequel to Metal Gear. Now what's kind of funny about this is that this was released only in America on the NES, and it was done without Kojima. And when Hideo Kojima found out about it, that prompted him to make the official sequel to Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. So, Snake's Revenge. Uh, it's really cool to have for the collection because I'm a huge Metal Gear fan, and it would be really neat to even track down, uh, like you know, some more kind of off-kilter stuff. Like, like uh, I never did get a chance to play the Metal Gear Acids on the PSP. I, I would really love to get some of that stuff. Um, I got Rad Racer, which I have played. I actually played this uh, back at my cousin's house, the same place where I played RC Pro Am. Played Rad Racer, and apparently this has a name on it that I didn't take off, and I. Can't even pronounce it, so whoever uh, sold this and let me have it, thanks to you, pal. Um, going along with my Dragon Quest is the original, it's Dragon Warrior. 
And of course, um, this is also kind of the same thing going on with Final Fantasy. There was a name change. It's Dragon Quest in Japan, but for some reason there was some sort of copyright thing they were afraid to kind of step on toes over here at the time. And they renamed it Dragon Warrior. So for the first, uh, was it four entries or however many entries, it was Dragon Warrior over here. Actually, it was until uh, Dragon uh, Dragon Quest Eight. That was the very first one that was actually called Dragon Quest. And since then, they've gone back with the remakes and they've actually released them at Dragon Quest um, subsequently for like the other systems that they got ported to. Now this one, I've mentioned the Capcom and their awesome titles back on the NES. And uh, I got Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I saw this and just had to jump on it. Great title. There, you know, I've got quite a quite a great little NES collection going on here, and there's still a lot more Capcom games I need to get. Mega Man. But uh, you know, there's also a couple more uh, of these licensed titles from Capcom that I need to get as well. I'm not sure how far I'm going to go with the NES. I don't, I'm not going to go for a complete collection by far, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely uh, at a good point in my collection where um, now I'm just going to be searching for certain titles when I go out. So really good thing there. Um, now onto the PSP, I got both of the God of Wars. I got them separately. Uh, the first one, Change of Olympus, I got during the big haul. And then Ghost of Sparta, I actually got up when I went up north, when I made the Genesis deal. I found this at Half Price Books. So uh, good deal with these. I actually, I really like the God of War series, even though I've only completely gotten through the first one. The main reason for that was I was playing Change of Olympus and the first one like at the same time. And I kind of got burned out on the uh, like on the game, like on just the gameplay and everything else. It's a great game, but it's just something that I kind of get burned out on the more that I play it. And I just haven't gone back to it yet. And the only one that I'm missing now is uh, what's the last one? Ascension. There you go. That's the only one that I'm missing now. And this one, I actually don't have the label or anything. It just has the box or the little cheap box, and then the UMD. But that's uh, Star Ocean First Departure. And uh, I actually went online on the coverproject.com to find a label to print off, and they did not have this game in there. Shame on you, Cover Project. Shame on you. Because what am I going to do? This thing looks so freaking ugly. I'm so glad that I keep all my handhelds in my little dresser over here where I kind of keep them out of the way. How can I display this thing? Huh? I'm, I'm going to have to find something. But this is actually the, uh, the remake of the original Star Ocean that never got released over here, which is on the Super Nintendo. Uh, when I got a uh, second story, I wasn't for sure if it was on the PS1 or not, but it was actually on the Super Nintendo. Never got released over here until way later, and it was done on a reproduction card. So um, now I got a couple more Wii games to my collection Metroid Prime 3 and Metroid Other M. I'm actually missing Metroid Prime 2 on the GameCube. So I'm almost got that series complete. I got these really cheap at, at GameStop. They were having a might you get one free under 20 or whatever so pick these up at GameStop and as well as this one I've been really looking forward to kind of dive into this I haven't got to it yet uh, with all the other games that you know that I've been playing mainly Dragon Age but uh, Bayonetta 2 I've heard nothing but great things about Bayonetta 2 I actually never played the original which hey this actually comes with the original on Wii U if you have a Wii U and you're looking at getting this you get two games in one you get the first one and the second one I've heard the second one is a big improvement. In fact, when I was playing it out, I was testing it. I was playing the opening level, and my wife had to stop and ask me if I was actually playing the game because she thought it was a cinematic. But I was actually battling some like some first monster, or first boss, or whatever it was. But yeah, Bandit 2, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then I got a nice stack of uh, PS2 games, and good old Star Wars Battlefront 2, which on my last video, if you watched that, you'll know that I had a bit of disappointment with the Xbox version. For some reason, the Xbox version is worth a lot more. I'm not exactly sure why, if it's really that much better. Um, you know, it, word is on the street that third-party games are always better on the Xbox. I don't know if that's really true, if it's all just preference. But what I will say is that this is an awesome game, no matter what system you have it for. So I went ahead and bought it for cheap on there. I did get... a. Uh, Another uh, PlayStation staple, especially on the PS2, if you have it, some of the greatest titles that ever came out for that, and this is one of them, Shadow of the Colossus. I never played this back then. This went right under my radar. I heard of it, I saw it, I was playing other things. So, looking forward to getting into this one. I've actually played a little bit of it when I was testing it out, and I could see exactly uh, why at the time this got the phrase that it did. It looked beautiful, 
It has a great uh, artistic value to it. And I got Onimusha 3, starring uh, uh, Jean Reno, which is a, what's he, like, is he a French actor? I think he is. Of course, he's been in like other stuff. Um, now that I've said that, I can't think of, think of exactly what he's in. I, I got one on the top of my head, but I can't think of it. I have the first Onimusha, I don't have the second one. And I think there might be another one, an offshoot somewhere, but anyway, Onimusha, really cool series. And I really like that as a series as well. Never played the third one though. Um, this one was actually a donation from my good buddy Alan at work. He's donated a couple other really cool titles to me in Final Fantasy X-2, which I, I have a love-hate relationship with this game because uh, I felt like it was kind of uh, robbed because I only got three characters and I felt like they could have used more. They could have brought some of the older ones back. but uh, And the story itself is a little eh. But I really like the dress sphere and the battle system. I thought that was really neat and they brought the ATB back. So definitely a, a good a good game for gameplay. This you know story is a little bit on the weak side for that one. Another donation from my friend Mike. And of course, he's donated some other stuff to me as well. He likes feeding into my um, gaming collection hobby, as well as making uh, talking me into buying certain things that I probably shouldn't be buying when I'm out. And that is Thief uh, Deadly Shadows, which I never played, and I still haven't even put this in yet. I kind of brought this home, tossed it in my game room, and when I was getting games here to kind of show what I've gotten uh, for, for the last month, uh, this was here. And, uh, so I'm looking forward to kind of checking that out, see how that is. Moving on to some of my 360 buys, uh, I finally got a copy of Ultimate Alliance 2. Um, now this is still going for quite a penny, even though it came out uh, quite a few years ago now. Uh, what was it 2009, 2010 or something like that? But uh, this still goes for like 35 bucks, and I got it for a, a little bit less than that. I got it at, you know, again, at GameStop, they're having a good deal, and I ended up seeing it. My wife talk, kind of talked me into it. Um, I had a chance to get this for really cheap on the PS3 in a local buy sell trade group, and unfortunately, uh, I never did get the chance to see that post again. I don't know what happened to it, but really, really liked that game. And I found this uh, Walmart sells used games now. If you didn't know and uh, normally I go by I kind of glance and age it's usually just titles I already have or have no interest in but I saw this one and it was killer is dead and I thought this is a really kind of a weird and quirky title for them to be having uh, even in their like use section so I was really excited to see that I've heard a lot about it it's kind of like this anime uh, really Japanese style of game and I as you may have noticed, and I've said this before, I really like collecting these games for the 360 because when I think of 360, I think of shooters and not something like this. But that is exactly my next two pickups. It is uh, another entry in my Sakaguchi collection, Blue Dragon. And so now I think I have these complete for my American releases. There may be one other one on like a handheld or like a DS and I, I may have to double check that. But for my consoles, my Sakaguchi collection from when he left Square Enix and formed, uh, was it Miss Walker? Yeah, Miss Walker. He formed Miss Walker, and he did a couple games after that. And now I've got all three of those. Now this is another Square Enix exclusive RPG to the 360. And this is actually published by Microsoft Studios and Square Enix. And I'm very interested in these games, because I do have one already, I think, from the last pickup. But this, I never even saw or heard of Infinite Undiscovery. And as I was playing it, it it's really cool uh, RPG setup. And again, anything that's like this that kind of came out and it, during that kind of down period, because I had a PS3 back then, I didn't have uh, a 360, so a lot of these games went right under my radar. I didn't even knew that they existed. And it's really cool to go back and when I see them, I, I grab them and buy them up because I just think that they're so fun to collect. Now this next one, I've been wanting to buy this for a while, and I happened to find it at one of my local used game stores, and uh, I got the Collector's Edition. I got uh, the um, Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Now, I actually tried playing Oblivion on my PS3 when my buddy Rob, he bought it, and I just could not get into it, but I did play Skyrim when it came out, and I liked it, and so I, I actually fired this up, and I had no problem getting into it. I guess it was just a timing thing. I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't into that kind of gameplay and again you know I'm also I'm not a big first person guy I have to get myself into the fact that I'm playing a first person game 
uh, I really got burned out on like the first person shooters and all that stuff. So whenever I'm playing a game that's a first person, um, a lot of the times I, I used to like cringe and just kind of get out of it. And I'm not doing that so much anymore, but back then I, I can see why I definitely was. But it's really cool because this thing actually is uh, complete as far as I know. It, you know, it comes with a bonus DVD. It comes with a. It comes with a map. It comes with a book. This little kind of like, kind of bound book here, and it actually came with one other thing, and that's like this metal coin. Uh, I think it's complete. I don't know, uh, but if it's not complete, please tell me. I picked up Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix, and I, I, I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, so it was a, it was like a complete you know, kind of a duh sort of situation for me to pick this up. But I also got like the limited edition that comes with like the box and a little pin. Unfortunately, I couldn't find like a collector's edition still out, but you know, it's no big deal. And I think the only difference was a bigger box and a plushie of like a Heartless or, or whatever. Now, the last two games that I have were uh, Christmas gifts from my buddy Nate and co-host of the podcast. So go check out our podcast, guys, if you're into comics. And uh, the first one, is, it's, it's disc only. But it's Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is kind of funny because on my most recent podcast, uh, I talked about Symphony of the Night and not owning it. And now I do. And again, Cover Project did not have anything for me to print to make this look more legit on my wall, and at least until I get another case. So Cover Project, get, get your shit together, man. Come on. Um, now the last one that I got is another awesome game. And I was floored that he got me this. Mega Man X. I finally own a Mega Man. I, I love Mega Man, and uh, my buddy Rob got uh, got a copy of this and was telling me, you know, hey, yeah, I'll sell it to you when I'm done with it. And I and uh, we were actually made like a trade deal, and I was like trying to get like Mega Man X, and it and, and even like the late his label was a little messed up, but I did I didn't care. I just wanted to own it. I wanted to play it. Now I have it. Thanks, Nate, so much for that. That these two games are just two big ones for my collection, and uh, thank you for just getting me these. These are awesome, man. So that kind of wraps up everything. Try to get everything done as soon as I could. I got a, I had a lot of games to go over, at least over like 40 or something like that. But over what I bought and the bundles for my you know game haul for my you know for my gifts, it was just quite a quite a big haul for me in, in December and probably one of my last really big ones for you know for quite some time. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys had uh, you know happy holidays and, and you know happy New Year and and I hope to see you guys more. In the uh, in 2015, go get, uh, go down there, check out the podcast, check us out on all of our social media stuff and everything, and check out more videos on this channel. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do, just to kind of stay current with whatever we're doing. And uh, I'll see you guys real soon. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it here for us today on the Game Addicts Podcast. I want to thank you guys for checking out this episode, showing back down memory lane with me here as we uh, close out 2014 pickup videos. That's the last ones, and all the ones we have left to go are in 2014, or no, I'm in 2015, and I think I there might have been one in 2016. There were, there was a point where we were still doing them while we are doing the Game Addicts podcast, and I'm because I, I, one of the last ones I did was with Mike. I actually filmed a whole final video, closing out the entire pickups uh, video uh a series I guess and I forgot like a whole stack of games after I put everything all up and I was so this massively upset with myself that I just decided to say screw it and just ended it without like saying hey yeah I'm not making any more of these I just stopped and uh, transitioned completely over to doing the pickups in the podcast so you know, will I ever do any more of these type videos probably not because as I said they're right here in the podcast they're always first thing so uh, we try to get them out of the way uh, right at the beginning because if there is stuff to talk about, they, you know, it takes up a chunk. But if there's not much, it's like, hey, yeah, I picked up this game. It's pretty cool. And that's it. But with that being said, I want to thank you guys for checking out this episode, uh, diving as deep as you have. Uh, if, if you guys would, please go check us out over on Patreon, over on the Journey into Comics Patreon. Uh, that is patreon.com forward slash Journey into Comics. You could help support this show. And all the shows on the network by, I mean, we only got two tiers right now, man. And that's like $1 for early access. $1 gets your early access up to a week for any show. As soon as it's done, as soon as it's edited, it's up there, ready to go up to a week. And you guys get access to that. And for $3, you get exclusive content every month, at least some something. 
and the game addicts will be doing something for that at some point as well so if you would go and uh, help us out just help support basically right now what that's doing is helping us support our our hosting costs for the podcasting stuff for both feeds so uh, it all help is appreciated and of course if you don't want to do that that is just fine you guys can just check out uh, any and all of our content um, free of charge as always but of course we're always available every Thursday right here on the uh, on the like on the YouTube channel we're o- over there on we're on Podbean we're on iTunes Stitcher Radio Google Play Music the podcast is everywhere we're on Facebook at Game Addicts Podcast Twitter and Instagram at Game Addicts Play we're going to be starting Twitch soon here in, into 2018 where we're going to be putting the show and live streaming it there as we go and of course, uh, doing some gameplay over there as well for you guys. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode and checking us out all into the year of 2018. We look forward to to having a lot of fun with you guys and sharing our love of modern and retro games for you all throughout the next year. Until then, I've been Brando, and I'll see you next year, guys.